Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king, and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money, in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you, because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in, and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you? that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit, so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his mina away from him, and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you, that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. 
some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you and your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Well, welcome. And believe it or not, I don't even know what session we are on. I think it's 20. 20, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's what was in Uh, my head. Well, you know, uh, I, I should have actually looked that up before it. Yes, it is. It is session 20. And not all, you know, for it seems like for the last, I, I don't know, it feels like the last 10 sessions, we have started our journey to Jerusalem, uh, way up in uh, Caesarea uh, Philippi. And we are finally, at the end of this lesson, going to be coming into uh, Jerusalem. But before we get to Jerusalem, we have a, a really neat story coming through Jericho, a little dinner party uh, uh, with a, an amazing parable uh, before we get back on the road and come into Jerusalem. So let's start with where we were. You know, we, we, we had just started coming into to Jericho uh, at the end of our last lesson. We had a, a rich, uh, rich young ruler, I guess you could say, uh, that, 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 that talked to Jesus. And now we get the, the flip side a little bit uh, of the story. And we're going through Jericho, and there's a little dude, a little tiny little dude, who wants to see Jesus, wants to see who this guy is, and he can't see him because of the crowd, so he climbs a sycamore tree. Let's talk about Zacchaeus. So let's talk about this guy. Yeah. Who is this guy? Fascinating guy. Well, he's, he's somebody very important uh, in that he's the chief tax collector. He's the head honcho. Uh, and over, uh, you know, a whole, uh, what would you say, a whole company of people who uh, are in local districts and areas and towns uh, all over Judea and what we call Israel. And uh, they are collecting money for the Romans. It's a, basically a, a government contractor job. And uh, he, he, he owns his own company. And the deal is the way the Romans did taxes is really only r- the Romans and Zacchaeus knew how much the Romans needed. <laughs> you know, they, they made the contract with him and nobody else knew. There was no, uh, you know, you couldn't file for a Freedom of Information Act uh, <laughs> disclosure or anything like that. And so Zacchaeus uh, knew what the Romans needed. He knew what his slew of collectors and workers needed, and he knew what he wanted for his whatever lifestyle he wanted to to maintain. So he just made a sum up uh, that uh, uh, was Romans plus employees plus uh, his own lifestyle, uh, probably some other factors, but those are the three biggies. And uh, boom, uh, he, he had to collect that much. And so went from went to it from there and uh jericho at the time was uh, one of the nicest places to live uh it was a quite a city herod had uh, and the herodian family had built uh i believe it's uh, three palaces in that area and so and it's uh by water it's it's just a a, a fascinating place and uh he He's the guy. He's the man where the buck stops. 
and uh, he wants to see Jesus. He hears Jesus is coming into town. And, and w- one person you forgot about that, or didn't forget, but uh, we just overlooked in the introduction was as he's coming into Jericho, he's already bumped into a guy who's begging. He's a panhandler on the road. Oh, yeah. You know, yep, yep. Around any urban area, uh, you, you've seen that. And uh, this panhandler, Mark, gives him a name. The Gospel of Mark gives him a name. It's Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. And Bart is uh, begging on the side of the road. And uh, here's this hubbub of, of people and uh, eventually uh, gets to talk to Jesus person to person and is healed. And uh, uh, my guess is uh, Zacchaeus uh, had seen uh, Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus had hear, heard Zacchaeus come by a few times. And uh, knowing that uh, what might have happened to Bartimaeus and heard the, the buzz, uh, Zacchaeus uh, hears that Jesus is coming through and wants to see him, wants to catch what's going on here. And, can't see him. He's uh, so short that uh, the story tells us he. There's no way he can hustle through the crowd because they're they're all over the place. Uh, so he climbs a tree, climbs a sycamore tree, and uh, sycamore fig, uh, and he can see it. And uh, you got to ask yourself. Jesus all of a sudden looks up at Zacchaeus in the tree and says, "Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your place tonight." Now, how did he know to keep <laughs> uh, uh, omniscience aside? Uh, well, uh, one of Zacchaeus's employees is there with Jesus, no doubt, and that's Levi, Matthew. Yeah. And uh, I could just see uh, one of the visualizations of this as I'm seeing is Jesus and the disciples, the apostles are walking through town, and Matthew goes, uh, who's in that tr- that's Zacchaeus in the tree. That's the that's the big kahuna. That's the that's the guy. And so he, you know, whispers in Jesus' ear, you've got a celebrity or your yourself watching you from that tree over there. Uh, and I'm sure Jesus decides, okay, uh Matthew knows him. Let's 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 invite ourselves over to his house. <laughs> well, well what what's funny about it, because you're absolutely right. This isn't the first time Jesus is sitting there, looked at a tax collector and said, hey, <laughs> I'm coming over for dinner. Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, and he does. Ex- I mean, it's really reminiscent of Matthew. I mean, he doesn't say follow me, but he's he's calls him by name and he says, I have need for you. We, we need we need to we need to come to your house tonight. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing that was fascinating to me in reading about it was uh, tax coll- the Jewish tax collectors uh, were uh, excommunicated and could not uh, attend synagogue worship. Uh, so they were um, on the outs with the usual uh, worshiping faith community and uh, probably with everybody else in town because uh, you know, he was taking big chunks of money. Uh, he's an outcast uh, that law that way. He's kind of an outlaw in the sense that uh, they were lumped with robbers and sinners in, in the general literature because they didn't care. It's kind of like I, I'm reminded of in this earlier chapter, the judge who did not fear God nor anybody else. I mean, uh, Zacchaeus was one of those guys that he just made the buck. And 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 that was his job. He he did his job well. He was the head guy for the Romans, hated by the uh, patriot uh, Jews, and uh, the Pharisees didn't want to have anything to do with him in their synagogues. And so, because uh, he associated with non-Jews, and they oh, yeah. they they had all kinds of uh, laws and rituals about what to do if you uh, became unclean uh, associating with with Gentiles. So. Uh, this is an uh, interesting story that's told that uh, and uh, interesting aspect of it for Jesus. Uh, Jesus has no problem uh, yeah. connecting and, uh, and being somebody who, whether it was a Roman centurion 
uh, up north or whether it's Zacchaeus, uh, the tax collector for the Romans, chief tax collector, uh, he's there for it because uh, uh, he knows they need it. You can have well, all the money in the world like Zacchaeus, but there's still something missing. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and uh, I go back to the, when Jesus is uh, telling the story about the Pharisee and the tax collector. Yes. And and that was, I think, how we began Just last Just in the session. chapter before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I'm reading into the scripture here when I say, I think Jesus is telling a real story there. And Zacchaeus is that person. Is the guy. That could very now, well be. <laughs> now, again, uh, that is, that is uh, there's nothing that I can give you that says this is true but i'm mm-hmm. in my own mind uh you know the sanctified imagination mm-hmm. i think jesus is telling a real story there and i mm-hmm. think zacchaeus who we run into just a few verses later you know what i mean uh i think this is him because this is a jew and like you said it's a jew that has been kicked out you know mm-hmm. he's been kicked out he, he's hated by his own people He's not liked by the Gentiles, and he's really probably not very well trusted by the Romans. But they, the Romans, like him because they, you know, he he gives them money. But you know, you know, uh, anyways, he takes him to the to his house, and Zacchaeus, who you get all these, he gladly, you know, came down. He, you know, uh, you get this in verse seven where it says they all began to grumble. And when I read that, I'm like, first of all, who are they? they. Is that yeah. everybody? Who who are the who is they? Because it doesn't say Pharisees. It doesn't say it doesn't put anything on it. It just says they. Who's they? Yeah. Well, um, one of the things uh, that. Uh, tax collectors in that day reminded me of is the same reputation that lawyers seem to have in our own day. There's lawyers jokes uh, uh, that you can tell I have one and I'll replace it with tax collector. So there's a guy walking down the beach and he finds a bottle and he rubs on it. He gets three wishes. And uh, uh, you know, the genie pops out and says, what three wishes would you like? And, I uh, says, well, my first wish, uh, I'd like a top of the line Porsche. Uh, and uh, let's see, the the one thing that there's a hitch to the wishes this guy gets, the hitch is that every wish that he makes, uh, every tax collector gets two of them. Okay, <laughs> So uh, if he wishes for a Porsche, then the tax collector is going to get two of them. Uh, you could say a camel, I guess, maybe back yep. then. Uh, or uh, how about the second wish? He wishes for a million dollars, and uh, the tax collectors are going to get two million. And then uh, he thinks for a moment. This time he kind of stops and he says, "I want my third wish to benefit all of humankind. Uh, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to donate a kidney uh, for my third <laughs> wish." Which, you know, the tax collectors would have to donate both of them, and then they're dead. <laughs> Uh, that's the kind of reputation that uh, they had is with lawyer jokes. And uh, hey, I love lawyers, and I don't think all lawyers are like that. But uh, that there is that uh, reputation that all, all lawyers know about, uh, and the jokes that are out there. That uh, two thousand years ago, the tax collectors uh, had to endure that. One more, uh, <laughs> one more tax collector joke before you go. What do you call twenty tax collectors at the bottom of the lake? No, because not enough. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Well, bad jokes. But uh, sorry about that. Uh, all, well, all apologies to tax collectors, modern and, and ancient. But see, that, that was the deal with Jesus. He, okay. he has one in his inner circle. That's right. Uh, and he's <laughs> and actually, uh, this whole section that you and I are looking at, Many people, when they look at this gospel, look at chapter 5 to chapter 19 as the body of the gospel of Luke. And everything else is introduction, 
and passion. And uh, 5 to 19, 5 is where Levi Matthew comes in. And where the the first, like you mentioned, the first dinner at a tax collector's dinner party with people all over the place at that dinner party. Uh, And then this one, uh, at Zacchaeus' house. We have another uh, dinner party of sorts, a gathering at Zacchaeus's home. And uh, uh, it's with these two, uh, he's uh, now in Jerusalem, the ministry, uh, both in the north and uh, the three trips to Jerusalem uh, that uh, Luke uh, seems to agree with John about. Uh, Now we're at that last of the three trips. And from here, he ascends into. Uh, to Jerusalem. So, I mean, so this crowd who has seen Jesus, they've seen him, like you say, heal Bartimaeus. He, they, he's, he, I like, I like Bart. That's good. Uh, and, and, Bart and, and we'll Zach. just call him, Bart, Bart and Zach. Uh, and, and, you know, they've seen that miracle. Bart's following Jesus now. He didn't, mm-hmm. yeah, Jesus didn't right. send him off. He's following him. And now Zach is sitting there and they, is everybody in the crowd, you know, and they're sitting there going and I'll, I'll read it. You know, he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. I mean, you know, yeah. like I said, the, <laughs> he's, the, basically before this moment, at least he had yeah. no scruples. Uh, oh, yeah. He just it was just whatever he had to do. He had to do it. He had the Roman army there. To, yep. to back him up and uh, whatever it took, uh, he did it. Yeah. And uh, he was a traitor to some. He was a collaborator. He was uh, somebody without morals, uh, just a cutthroat kind of guy. Uh, and uh, so I'm sure everybody yeah. <laughs> is like, oh, come on, Jesus, what's your problem? Well, you just, okay, so you just, sort of put this in your mind. Jesus is walking through uh, Jericho. Zacchaeus can't see him. He's up in the tree. Jesus says, come on down. Uh, I, and he's coming down and they're, they're walking to his house now. And people around are going, look at this guy's a sinner. Why is he going there? And then the, I think the weirdest thing in this whole story, and, and we haven't gotten to, to Zacchaeus' house yet, but it says, but Zacchaeus stops. Mm. He stops. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he looks at Jesus and says, Lord, behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have extorted anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. We haven't even hit his house yet. <laughs> they got the grumbling going on. And that tells me right there. I'm sorry, this is the guy, this is the tax collector Jesus was talking back, uh, talking about, uh, you know, this is the guy. He knows, he Humble. knows, mm-hmm. he, yeah, he, well, he knows what's going on. He knows Jewish laws because here's the thing. He's going beyond and above the, what was required because what's required is, uh, uh, I don't have the verses with me, but I think it's uh, Deuteronomy and then also in Numbers, mm-hmm. where it, if if you you have to give back uh, and and sort of retribution is, is one fifth. Or, it, is, it is it is four times too. Uh, I have it, that, it, it, uh, it depends yeah. on what it is. Yeah, I mean, right. So, it depends on what it is. But if you've defrauded somebody, yeah, the, you have to give that four four times. So he's he's sitting there saying this, and it, he it's the that's the law. You know, that's the law. So all of a sudden, yeah, you Uh, know this. Exodus 21, 37. Yeah. 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 So so this is, he knows his Torah. Even though this guy is a tax collector, has been executed, he knows the law. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, again, it's one of those salvation things that you pointed out, uh, I think, last week. Today? Salvation has Salvation. come to this house. There's so Salvation. so again, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's interesting uh, it, w- uh, with the reputation and all. Zacchaeus's name literally means pure one. Pure one. So yep. I'm sure Mr. Clean 
uh, <laughs> was a joke to everybody else around there because he was the guy hanging out with all the unclean people. And yet right. he comes clean in this story. Yes, uh, and he does. With, it's because of Jesus, uh, amazingly enough. So glory to God for that, that uh, Jesus comes and gets us uh, wherever we are, whoever we are, if we're willing. Uh, and, and so we we end up at Zacchaeus's house. But uh, the one thing I uh, I want to grab this here quick, uh-huh. because uh, what happens to this guy? OK, a lot of times you sit there and you're like, uh, you know, where do these guys go from here? We this is the only time we hear about this guy and we don't hear about him anymore. And or, or wait a second. Or do we? Well, in the early church documents, uh, Clement. Uh, and and I, I can't find it. I had it, but I think it's Clement of Alexander wrote, he becomes the bishop of Caesarea. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, I'm not sure what Caesarea, and I, 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 I don't have, I'm, I'm trying to find it real quick. But uh, I, uh, probably Caesarea by the sea, I would guess. Yeah. But, so he yeah. becomes the bishop. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a pretty big change. <laughs> From from a tax collector who Come is making church leader, basically yeah. making his salary. You know how much do you want to make this year? You know, well, you know, I just write down the number, and I'm, right. I, it's it, it's it's the multi level marketing scheme of the Roman Empire. You know, right, right. Hey, <laughs> my teenage son's going to need a camel this year, so uh, yeah, let's right. see, we're going to up that uh, taxes by that much. So. It's 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 crazy. So we, it, we, it really is in a context of rich and poor, because we have poor. the poor beggar, uh, Bartimaeus, as he comes in, and then yeah. uh, here. And then in the bigger picture, uh, there, you mentioned it, the, there was that, the rich uh, uh, lawyer that uh, yep. asks him, a rich man, uh, yep. uh, in the, the question in the 16, and then in uh, 21, we're going to get uh, stories about the poor widow putting in the widow's yep. might and the rich donors uh, who, yep. make, who gave the most. And then in Acts, uh, later on, Barnabas and, is going to be uh, a rich uh, yep. believer. And they're going to be uh, contrasting Barnabas right away with uh, Ananias and Sapphira, this, yep. this other couple that's wealthy that holds stuff back. Uh, and doesn't you know give fully? So uh, this is one of Luke's themes. The uh, and what's what I think is wonderful about it is he's got rich and poor. A lot of yeah. times, uh, some scholars focus in on the you know the early Christians were the poor and the downtrodden. Or that's all Jesus cared about. Well, this story is not about that. Uh, this story is about caring about somebody that's rich, uh, and it, they're still going to care about the poor, but it's both. It's not one or the other. Jesus cared about everybody and was willing to, to connect with everybody. Well, what's, what's amazing, and, 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 and we'll, we'll move on to a lot more money here in just a moment, mm-hmm. is that um, sometimes you get people that'll basically say, hey, I don't want to hear the preacher up there on Sunday talking about money or finance i don't want to hear about that because that's none of your business church per you know church preacher church guy or anything uh i i i'm sorry but you know jesus talked a lot about money a lot about money i i just picked up a book um and i'll get the title here and, and it's basically about biblical finance. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's a book that I, I heard about through. Um, gosh, I can't even remember who I heard about it through. Uh, but it's called the Stewardship, "Stewarding the Earth: uh, A Biblical Worldview of Economics," and it's by uh, uh, Stephen McDonald. And basically, it takes what Jesus taught. <laughs> Jesus, mm-hmm. it, Jesus taught. You can go back and look at the par- uh, or the Proverbs and, and, and the Old Testament. There's even more about it, uh, you know, there. But I'm sorry, finances is a big topic and uh, uh, how you what you do with it. 
uh, you know, in, in the teaching of the church and the teaching of Jesus. And, and you know, anybody that sits there and, and says, you know, I don't want to hear that stewardship campaign. I don't want anything to hear about that. It's like, if we, you know, Gonna have to gonna have to eliminate a lot of the New Testament. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to ignore Jesus. There, it's no, gonna so, be a lot of a lot of red letters being taken out. So, oh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> there's somebody else that uh, Zacchaeus was probably in trouble with, and that is uh, his spouse. Can you imagine bringing Jesus and <laughs> the twelve over uh, for dinner and not having told her yet? You know, he didn't have a, a, a phone to call her and say, hey, honey, is it OK if I bring you house guests tonight for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no, we well. won't even go. We won't even go there. Uh, <laughs> well, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> so we Good get reason. to yeah, we we get to Jesus's or uh, Zacchaeus's house uh, somewhere along the line. And what interest me about this is uh and and i'm gonna read it here it says uh, starting in verse 11 while they were listening to these things what things what jesus was saying uh about zacchaeus today salvation has come to you because uh, because he too is the son of abraham the the son of man has come to seek the save uh which was lost you know so they're listening to that and the thing that i get is uh he tells a parable because he's coming near Jerusalem and Jerusalem's about 10 miles away, but they were supposing they again was that crowd. They were supposing that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. So, whoa, you know, you, you got to set this parable up with the expectations that those folks that were around Jericho saw all these things happen, they thought the kingdom of God was going to come immediately. Mm-hmm. Now, let's, let's talk about that for a second. What's the kingdom of God? Mm-hmm. And it, I believe that for the day, the expectation was that Messiah, when Messiah came, was going to be a son of David. Jesus fit the bill. In fact, the the blind beggar, uh, Bart, at the, you know, in the early part of the story here coming to Jericho, uh, gets told it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he yells, hey, Jesus, son of David, David. have mercy on me. You know, (laughs) excuse me. So uh, he knows that this is uh, a son of David. This is uh, somebody in the Messiah, uh, kingly blue blood line. And. this uh, arrival to Jerusalem this time, it seems there's a whole lot of expectation that uh, there's going to be a military uh, upheaval that uh, they're going to kick the Romans out of all those places. And uh, so you can imagine that the the mixed feelings about of people of Zacchaeus uh, oh, yeah. following Jesus because here he's a Roman collaborator, but now he's following somebody that people are. The buzz is, hey, uh, the king, God's kingdom, the Jewish yeah. kingdom, is going to be restored, and the Romans are going to be out of here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, so, total, to, total. Uh, it, it, this is, you want to talk about counterculture? Mm. They're expecting the Messiah, all right, and the, they think this guy fits the bill. This Jesus guy fits the bill. And he's in the house of of a tax collector, yeah. Like, being, being <laughs> and and some of his followers are tax collector. Mm-hmm. We got we got a, a you know a, a zealot. We got women. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. wild. And, and and this is the guy who the you know the 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 leaders of the temple. The you know the Pharisees are are plotting to kill, and so people the, yeah you want to talk about completely messed up <laughs> you know what expectations whoa this is crazy yeah exactly and the story that comes that you're introducing yeah. is a story that kind of lays out a a bigger picture it, it as Luke introduces it this is a corrective 
to those who think it's going to happen right now. It's, uh, immediately, we're going to have a uh, revolt. Uh, well, such a revolt will not happen until 66 uh, AD. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Jesus tells this parable about a nobleman. Uh, and you could say he's a nobleman in the sense that he's a blue blood. He's, a, he's in the Davidic uh, kingly line. And this blue blood receives a far off kingdom, a distant kingdom. And uh, we could say that's the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven yep. uh, in uh, in uh, the some of the terms and the gospels. And Matthew tells one aspect of this story, and it's uh, what the nobleman, when he leaves to receive the kingdom, uh, gives to the people that work for him. Uh, and in this case, slaves, servants, uh, he, he doles out. Uh, some uh, wealth and says, hey, I want you to do some business while I'm gone. And uh, and he leaves and he, he goes off. And then he's also hearing about, and it, it tells us this uh, right off in uh, verse, uh, let's see, 14. There's citizens 14. that hate him uh, that that don't want him to be reigning over them. And so there are those who are resistant uh, to this new king and uh, this nobleman who's in inheriting or receiving a kingdom. And so there's a this story, uh, this part of it's not in the Matthew version. And so this this is Luke's. Uh, Luke uses a different amount of money. Uh, he uses the talent rather than the mina. Uh, it, it, he, it's a whole retelling again. Yeah. Uh, and this one has uh, people who don't want anything to do yeah. with the nobleman being king. And so this one, for me, that really just came awake uh, this time as I read it. I, I didn't even remember this telling of the parable. But studying for our time, it was Jesus telling a parable about himself, uh, about yeah. the bigger picture of the Son of Man. Son of God coming and someday uh, coming again uh, and arriving after being gone and, and having received that kingdom. So it's uh, fascinating. Well, and, and and we talked a little bit before we actually started recording, you know, that verse 14 is, um, wow, you don't know who these citizens are. OK, and what I mean by that is if you believe where the Bible, what the Bible says, that we have, you know, this physical realm and then we also have this mm -hmm. invisible realm and the citizens hated him. Was is that the citizens of this realm, this physical realm? Is is that the Pharisees? you know, the, the people that were supposed to be watching over, is it the people, you know, the Israels, the Israelites, which were supposed to be a chosen nation, or is it supposed to be where, uh, the, you know, the divine council type thing where, you know, it, it, when we get to uh, uh, Genesis 10 and we separate, you know, we get the Babel, uh, the Tower of Babel, and he separates all the nations. And then you find out in Deuteronomy 32, where he puts over a son of God. If you are looking at the Dead Sea Scroll part of it, where that word is, you know, in some Bibles, you will see that as sons of Israel. But Israel wasn't a nation at that point. You know, we're delegated to those uh, nations that were separated at the Tower of Babel. Uh, whoa, what, you know, what's he talking about? Who hated him? Is it both? I don't, you know, you just don't know. Multiple but levels of, uh, of looking at it. Yeah, but but what you Anybody get, that it, hates him uh, reigning. Yeah, and, and let's face it. If you look at it, everybody, it's like the they's from, from Jericho. There is a lot of people that do not want Jesus to reign on this earth. And I'm not talking about at the time that he was here. 
<laughs> I'm talking about even today. Yeah. All times, all places. Yeah. So, uh, but what we get is this parable, he gave them resources and he wanted them to do his work while he was off on this far off country. Let's go back to Genesis, Adam and Eve. What were they supposed to do? They were supposed to have dominion over this earth. They were supposed to multiply, uh, populate the earth and, and control the, you know, have stewardship over the earth. Mm. This is a real story, <laughs> isn't it? This is a real story. So could it, you know, uh, you know, Psalm 82 talks about, you know, when, when he sits in the council of the gods and says, you guys have not done what I'm supposed to, I've asked you to do. So you got all these levels. It's mm -hmm. great. I mean, this is, this is fun. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, na maybe narrowing it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've just been with Zacchaeus and mm -hmm. Jesus's mission statement ends Zacchaeus uh, about coming to seek and save the lost. The lost. And I think people are the top treasure. Uh, yeah. the, the order of creation kind of That's brings right. that to the fore. Uh, God's, uh, uh, you know, treasure the creation is that, that uh, sixth day of uh, creating uh, humans, creating man and woman. And uh, here's Jesus coming for the lost humans, yeah. uh, the lost people. Uh, that's his mission statement, that he's come to seek and save them. And here with this, as, the, as he, this uh, nobleman entrusts his uh, riches, his treasures yeah. to his uh, servants, he, Jesus is... In, is going to be after the next few chapters of the next episodes of his life, he'll be leaving uh, yep. as far as a human, uh, you know, uh, existence, his earthly life. And he's going to be leaving that treasure yep. to the believers, to the disciples. Yep. And uh, is going to someday, like in this parable, come back and say, uh, and, <laughs> and, and it's a, a, a line that uh, is great. Uh, he wants to know what business they had done. Yep. Uh, you know, so what is our business as the believers of the church? Well, it's to seek and save the lost. Save the lost. It's, it's mission. It's, it's well, to treasure those people and particularly the lost people. And so often we're the last place people want to uh, focus is lost people. They're, they'd rather, yeah. you know, focus on, uh, the, the holy club, if you will, uh, rather than how to bring in those people that aren't. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, so well, this is, I mean, this is, this is so deep because there's so much rebellion going on. You know, you got the, the rebellion with Adam and Eve. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they were supposed to populate this earth and have stewardship over. It. They were supposed to watch over God's creation. Failure. All right. <laughs> now, now you talk about Tower of Babel and what, you know, the nations were split up. The sons of God were supposed to be over those. God pulled out a people, Israel, that was supposed to be his people that were supposed to be a kingdom of priests to bring all of those nations back together on failure, failure for Israel, failure for, uh, for the, the sons of God. Now you get another turn, <laughs> you know, and that this is not only looking, like you say, looking backwards, but it's looking forward to, I'm giving you a mission. Mm -hmm. All right. I've given you a clear way to mm -hmm. reconcile people back to me. Uh, and what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the riches? Jesus is now very shortly going to be imparting because if if you look at it we are what less than 60 days i'm talking about in our story from jesus ascending into heaven mm -hmm. all right because we got a week 
and then we got then we have the 40 days after he goes into heaven uh, we have there's a very short period of time here where he's going to be ascending into heaven <laughs> all right and he's going to be gone and this is what this is it this is it right now i'm giving you riches church people looking forward what are you going to do with it because i'm coming back and again, it started out with they're looking for the kingdom of God. It's already here, but not yet, which means there's still work to be done. So That's right. let's and talk. He, he entrusts those riches. And what he, as the story goes, uh, whether it's Matthew or Luke, uh, he expects more back. He, he, he doesn't yeah. just want back what he gave him. He That's wants right. yeah. uh, investment and uh, return uh, with yeah. that investment, even doubling, uh, you know, uh, in some cases, but at least having something come back that and, and even says, hey, if you thought I was a you know, tough uh, boss and I was going to expect something back, well, you should have put it in the bank and at least you got an interest. Let's just get interest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you're not going to percent it, not double. If you're not going to double it or <laughs> well, and it, fantastic games. And, 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 that, and that's what he goes through here. He, and, and this, this mind might, however you want to call it. Um, uh, that is 30 days wages for a, a, a day labor. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Which, if somebody, okay, and I did the math here. This math is fuzzy at best. Uh, but the the uh, the median household income in Texas is right around sixty eight thousand dollars. So that means somebody, or you know, Jesus in this story is giving you, church member. Sixteen thousand dollars. Are you going to make thirty-two thousand dollars with it? Or are you going to take the sixteen thousand dollars and put it under your pillow at night and not do anything with it? Or in this case, wrap it in a wrap it up in a napkin that says, uh, you know, just kind of store it in the drawer in the bottom the store, of the drawer. The, so that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, wow. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, wow. He's expecting a us yeah, to uh, be out there uh, and sharing with people uh, the the treasure we know of as and, and that citizenship uh, for the kingdom that uh, yep. anybody can have uh, to, uh, you know, get out there, use it or lose it. Uh, I once just put it, this is a use it or lose it parable. <laughs> you know, well, I mean. You know, we have with the scripture, with the full breadth of scripture, we understand whether you like it or not, we are we are going to live forever. OK, obviously not not in this body, in this form, but we are made for eternity. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to spend it in one of two places. You're either going to be with God are without God, separated from God. Mm -hmm. Now you can sit there and say that's heaven or that's hell. How about it? Doesn't really matter. You're going to be with God or you're going to be separated from God. Here's the thing. As followers of Christ, guess what? We know that. And if we're not giving somebody that message in some fashion or form, listen, we're not all theologians. All right. We don't, I don't think even the theologians can explain everything that's in the Bible, but you can spl explain a simple message that, you know what? You were created by God. We are, we, we are fallen creatures. And, and, and the, the only righteousness out there is by God. And guess what? You have access to it. And just like Jesus said to Nicodemus, believe all you have to do is believe <laughs> well if we can't get that message across i don't know i mean you know then we're just we're just wrapping that message in a handkerchief and mm -hmm. and, and hiding it away uh, yep Talking i mean it's away. not it's not that hard and it's forever uh, difficult to understand <laughs> you know it's easy to understand and difficult to understand 
Uh, you know, but shoot, uh, can't Lord, we talk Lord to somebody? Us. Yeah, and I think that's why Jesus was so popular and so he was drawing crowds like that is he was able to make it plain and simple. Yeah. Uh, he had a that gift of being able to just say, here it is, and take yeah. make your choice. And people did. And uh, that's what the Gospels and the rest of it's best. Yeah. Um, I get what, what anything else you want to talk about with this one? I mean, we, we've, we've sort of talked no, around so, it. Well, well no, I think it, it, we, we, I think we explained it, uh, uh, you know, we didn't read it, but, uh, yeah. the parable basically is a big picture, uh, of the next part of the gospel of what, what's going to happen with Jesus. And it's, it's not just the, uh, simple stuff. It's cosmic proportions of yeah. that someday when it all, cause at the end of the parable, uh, the people who didn't want, uh, the nobleman to be their King, they are not dealt a very pretty end. <laughs> I could yeah. I'll put it lightly that way. Well, let's just let's just read that one. You go and, ahead. And, and in verse tw- verse twenty seven, but these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here, and slay them in my presence. Okay, Ouch. that is that is not a meme that you're going to see on Facebook with the with the quote underneath said by Jesus. <laughs> right, meek and mild Jesus. Yeah, but uh, there it is. Well, because I mean, it, well, and it goes back to to the, again that that wonderful uh, you know meeting with Nicodemus uh, in that's recorded in John chapter three, where he says, "Listen, all you have to believe, and those who have uh, that that don't believe, well, they've already been judged." Ouch! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for God so loved the world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, done deal. Yeah. Done deal. So, yeah. I mean. There, there is a decision to make. Uh, and God is, the, the father is waiting. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you know, this class has gone through uh, Mere Christianity. And with one of the programs that I'm working on right now, I had to reread it. And, and, you know, in the first chapter, uh, C.S. Lewis basically says, hey, listen, and I'm paraphrasing this mightily. This, so this is a, a realism. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that is, you know, there's a natural law out there, a natural law. We know inherently what is right and wrong. And unlike gravity, which is a natural law, you know, a, a physical part of it. This is a natural law of the spiritual part of it. Here's the thing is, we know it, but none of us can do it. <laughs> you know, none of us can do it on, on our own. And, and, and even if we try, we still, we still fail, but we know that natural law is there. Listen, he, he puts it there. You see two people quarreling. And they're sitting there going, well, I, I disagree with you, you know, and whatever. Well, there's a common ground. They, they know what right and wrong is, and they're arguing about what is right and wrong. Well, it's like, well, there has to be that, that thing outside of us that says this is what right and wrong is. And that is, that is God. That is the creation. And shoot, you don't want to be an enemy <laughs> just by verse 27 of right. the creation. You know, um, and the thing is, everything that's out there, every Ten Commandments, all the rules, they're they're not out there to stifle your free will. They're not out there to stifle your life. They're to make your life way easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, fulfilled. Yeah. 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 I mean, everybody, th- you know, that's the thing. We all want to do our own thing. But unfortunately. <laughs> That doing our own thing, it doesn't work real well. So maybe we just obey God. <laughs> I don't know. It, well, isn't that one of the great lines, I think, of Scripture uh, is, uh, I believe it's at the end of the book of Judges, where everybody just wanted to do what they thought was right. In their you own know, eyes. In yeah. their own eyes. I mean, it's just like, uh, that's that is so true now. Uh, they want to go yep. 80 miles an hour and the slow lane on 183 and uh, you know, cut. 
get everybody off and make a four lane change. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, you, you name it. Uh, yeah. all, people just want to do what they want to do. And well, that's listen. the story. That's the, that's this story. That's the yep. lost and found story. And, and listen, I love Texas. I love America. But one of the things that we we've got is we don't want anybody telling us what to do. <laughs> you know, that's sort of the deep, the deep. You know, I, I want to say inbred culture of the Western society. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I got to tell you. I want somebody to tell me what to do <laughs> and I want it to be God. <laughs> so yes. it's, a, Amen. It, it's a lot easier. Amen. Well, we're well, getting out one, of shape. We have one more story, don't we? We do. And I, you know, uh, I want to put up uh, one thing first, if I can find it. <laughs> I'm trying to put something up and I'm using my, my daughter's is that, computer. <laughs> is that what we were doing last time? Uh, we, we mentioned, uh, or is this a whole different thing? Uh, we this mentioned is, last time uh, the Jericho uh, uh, trip to Jerusalem and a website yeah. or a video that we had. But I'm yeah, not sure well, that's what you're up to, or are you doing something else? Well, I'm going I'm to try to put up. Uh, uh, Google uh, Earth real quick, and then I'm going to put up the, what we talked about before. Well, I might not be able to put it up because uh, it won't let me share it on her computer. So forget that. We'll post it. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll yeah go let's on. go. So, so there, uh, we'll post, uh, and, and I think we posted this uh, in one of the previous uh, mm -hmm. sessions, but I'll po we'll post it again here that really shows that journey from Jericho to Jerusalem. And it also explains a little bit about what critics will come out at you when you uh, basically look at the different gospel accounts where he's coming into Jericho, going through Jericho, going out of Jericho. Well, there was two Jerichos. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there was a residential and there was sort of a municipal Jericho mm -hmm. on the way to Jerusalem. So there, there's a lot that that video will show you, and we won't I won't go too much into it now because we can't show it to you. I had it all planned. I just should have actually practiced it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. That's okay. As you but can, it's, I'm not it's home. An, yeah, it's <laughs> an 11 minute video uh, yeah. uh, from a thing called the Satellite Atlas, yep. uh, where they have several videos of the Holy Land like that. But this one's particularly good because it shows the 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 trek in yep. different ways, and there's a one kind of side cut of uh, the the trip from Jericho on uphill uh, to Jerusalem and uh, shows what was going on here is there because uh, the verse 28 makes that transition and says after he'd said these things at Zacchaeus's yeah. house uh, then uh, he was going on ahead ascending to Jerusalem and uh, that that's it's a uh, ascending he was really yeah. doing some uphill climbing. This was a, a tough and a deserty uh, climate, and so we're yeah, it, well, and that, a little and of I, that story. And it, it's one of the great things about looking at maps when you when you look at these things you know, when you're reading in the scripture because uh, Jericho's north <laughs> of of Jerusalem. Right. Jerusalem is south. So when we think ascending. Uh, it, I always think, oh, he's going north. Going, well, going up to Jerusalem. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's actually going south, but up, uh, and Elevation. and it's it's really up. I mean, it's it's really up. But oh. we we get this trip, and Luke doesn't give us a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we just we just pop in, and and all of a sudden, you know, we're on the other side of the Mount of Olives, and we're just getting ready to go in. Or actually, we're we're about to get into the village, or you know, we're in Beth Page. Uh, but, uh, uh, but there's and, and yet and yet you know he he, he does, doesn't give us the the topography and yeah. the the toughness of the trip. But he's since nine fifty one when Jesus in Luke's gospel set his face to a resolve to go to Jerusalem. Uh, yeah. He he goes a few times and then this is it. And yeah, so this is uh, it. for me, uh, Jesus, it, it, just the simple line went on ahead. Uh, was going on up to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, 
since we know this gospel is going to end uh, soon, there's only a few more chapters left. Uh, we're in chapter 19 of 24 uh, yep. chapters. Uh, this is the trip to Jerusalem where Jesus is not just going to Jerusalem. He's going to face uh, his destiny. He's going to face his, and, and he's told it three times already in this yep. gospel again. And we talked about that last time in detail. Uh, yep. The people that are going to resist him, the the uh, things that are going to happen to him uh, physically, uh, and he's going to be crucified, and uh, most torturous death anybody can wow. have. It was devised to be torturous. Yeah. Uh, so everybody else that saw it said, uh, I, I'm not going to have that happen to me. And uh, he is heading for trouble. He knows it only too well, and yet he sets himself to it because he knows it has to be. Uh, this well, is going to be the, the saving of the world, uh, the salvation of creation. And, and you, back, yeah, back during the pandemic, <laughs> way when it started, uh, you know, we the the uh, the Bible study group we were doing the last week of Jesus, and mm. unfortunately, the last week of Jesus ended up being, uh, you know, the, you know. The last week we went out of our house for a year, uh, but but I remember doing that series, and you, you you and actually that's what kicked off this series. But that's a whole other story. Uh, when he knew, I mean, he knew everything that was going to happen because even when you look here at, at verse thirty, he sent two of his disciples in. He says, "Hey, listen, I want you to go into the village ahead of us." All right. Now he's saying this as he's getting into Bethpage and to, to, to Bethany. So he's he's right there on the other side, the other slope of, of uh, Mount of Olives. He's saying, go over there, get this. When somebody asks you what you're doing, you just tell them, hey, you know, the Lord sent it, you know, it sent us to do it. Those little details are absolutely fantastic because he knew exactly what was going to happen. And you were talking about, you know, again, when 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 you're thinking about the kingdom of God coming, well, there's there's a great book that I will not recommend because it is an insanely liberal book. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that was great was the historic part of it. This was the Passover time. What is the Passover celebrated? The Jews being freed from oppression. Roman Empire knows this. Jesus is coming in from uh, the, the one side of the city, all right, coming over Mount of Olives and then coming into the city uh, from, from the, the west. East. 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 Coming from the east, going west. You're going west. The Roman troops did not like being in Jerusalem. It was hot, muggy, and they'd rather be in Caesarea uh, maritime on the sea but they wanted troops in that city because everybody was going to come to that city so you get this juxtaposition the roman army the legions are coming in to basically reinforce the city during passover they're coming from the mediterranean they're coming into the city they're coming into the old city and going going into antonio fortress and they're getting Put over there, so the, which is the, the northern end of right. uh, of Jerusalem. But you Temple. get this, Ro yeah, this Roman mm -hmm. power, this this uh, view of might, you know, and it was uh, it was a show, you know. They're coming in with all of their garbs, their horses, their spears, their shields, everything, and it is a a show of force. And then Jesus is coming in the other side on a colt of a, on a donkey. They're singing Hosanna, Son of David, all the fun stuff that you get. And over here, it's, we will, we will knock you out <laughs> if you get out of line. And it's, I mean, that, that picture of what's going on from a political standpoint is fascinating. I mean, just fascinating. There are two cultures coming mm -hmm. together and the one in the middle is the one that took the resources and hit them in a napkin. <laughs> and those are the, you know, that, so 
Uh, that's all I got. You go, you go, you go from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it, the this story talks again about Jesus entrusting somebody to do something. Uh, it's a it's a little task, but he sends two of his disciples into town, saying, "Go and get this colt." That uh, in Matthew, there's a colt and a donkey, yeah. and uh, Mark and Luke, it's just the colt. But uh, and and in Luke. Uh, I can't remember about Mark or Matthew, but it's a colt that's never been ridden before. Well, never that's been asking for trouble right there. I mean, yep. if it's not broken <laughs> and you're going to try <laughs> to ride it, good luck with that. But they put Jesus on it and it doesn't seem to be any. The, the colt is just, you know, even tempered. Uh, no no reports of fucking Broncos here. Uh, so go and go well, ahead. Oh, I was going to say that, you know, we think of the colt being humble and it and it is because we think of horses and things like that. But you go back into judges and the king's son or the the judge's sons that he had 70 sons and 70, 70 donkeys for him to go. And you, you had this. This was a in your face to the Pharisees of what was expected of the Messiah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he was announcing his messianic message Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's almost a passive aggressive, if you want to think of it that way. He's fulfilling prophecy by doing this. Prophecy that was the expectation of the kingdom of God coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we think of it as humble, and it is. We think of it as this triumphal entry. Sort of, it's a death entry. Is really what it is. I mean, it's a death entry. It's a death march, but it's also very rich in the history uh, of of Jerusalem or of the Jews. Of you know, kings coming in on donkeys, kings' sons, seventy sons and seventy donkeys. You know, it showed all this you know rich power and history, and it's what they expected from the Messiah coming to them. As mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's it's such. We could spend this is we say this over and over again. We could spend a month on this one. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, in, in a small way, uh, sending these two guys in to get the animal to bring it so that Jesus could enter that way. Uh, uh, my uh, kind of uh, closing thoughts about this part of it is Jesus still is sending us out there to prepare the way, uh, to find the ways to have Jesus enter into other people's lives and be the, the king uh, who's come, uh, you know, the blessed one in the name of the Lord to be the one. Uh, so we have a, we still have a, a mission ourselves in presenting Jesus in such a, a powerful way and in a a saving way that uh, it's he is uh, attractive and coming to claim uh, what's his and that's us uh, to uh, you know bring us all back to the Father and uh, it's a powerful uh, vision uh, of us having a mission to uh, get things ready whether it's just yeah. getting the the horse or uh, it's uh, you know being out there in uh, big ways, little ways. We're called to uh, prepare the way. That's right. That is so right. And and here's the thing: preparing the way will offend people. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, because the disciples are sitting there uh, saying to Jesus, "Hey, do you see what's happening here?" Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, they're going nuts. They know what you're doing. You're offending them, Jesus. Don't you see this? You're offending them. And, and, and Jesus says, I tell you, if, if they're silent, the stones will cry out. So I think the, the other thing that we have to remember, the lesson that we're learning here is, you know what? Don't be afraid to offend somebody <laughs> if you're telling if you're telling the truth 
truth. Of, yeah. uh, the tr- and not your truth, but Jesus's truth. And the thing is, it's also how you present it. Always in love. Always in love. But the thing is, understand that even if you do things in love, if they are the truth, the truth will set people free, but it'll also set them off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Well, I think we're we're just about there. Yeah, we are, you know, and um I think we also see, you know, because some of the things that, that happen, some of the things that Jesus looks at uh here is he he's weeping over the city Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Uh, and and honestly uh i i think i think jesus is weeping for the past but he's also weak weeping for the the very near future which uh you know in 30 some odd years those walls won't be there Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, I thought about it at this time, too, and reading it, uh, knowing that uh, uh, and but and yet knowing um, w- at least in Luke's telling here, the Pharisees are there in verse thirty nine, rebuke your yep. disciples for yep. this behavior. And then what Jesus says uh, if you're uh, one of the Pharisees or you're from the temple or uh, anybody there, you may think what he's talking about is what they're coming to do right then. Uh, if you think about it, uh, if you known what day this was, uh, you'd make for peace, like you'd be making peace with me. But now it's been hidden from your eyes and the days are going to come upon you when your enemies will throw up a bank before you and surround you and ground uh, level the ground within you they could have thought he was talking about what they're up to right now as they're coming in uh if, if you like put yourself in that audience at that time especially if you're somebody who's wary of, uh, of jesus's uh presence there that them was, was fighting words uh, it oh, seemed, yeah. though we now know uh you know based on what he knew about the babylonian conquest and and previously, and based on what the Romans uh, would do uh, in just a matter of uh, a few decades, yeah. uh, we're, we're seeing something here that uh, probably got them really worried right at the moment because, oh, hey, yeah. look at all these people coming into town here, and we got a guy claiming to be uh, Messiah. Uh, or a Davidic king, and uh, we could have a rebellion right here. So you can kind of almost uh, this time. I really felt the the power of uh, the turmoil that oh yeah was going on right with this act of coming in. Well, and and uh, to me, it's it, it it rings a little bit to today where people say religion and politics they shouldn't be together at all and and, oh shoot uh, you know i i i'm gonna try to be careful here uh i'm very active on you know with one of our representatives from the state government and and uh the representative is like church or, or christ should not be even talked about that should only be at church well this situation where we're seeing here this is not only a church situation, you know, if you think about the, the, the temple being church, the, you know, the, that okay. gathering. Institutional a, religion. Mm-hmm. Institutional. This is a political thing that's going on. You've got the Romans there. You've got this expectation of the people wanting to overthrow the Roman occupation. Hey, listen, you know, they always say you shouldn't talk politics or religion, you know, you know what? Jesus is talking politics and religion right here. I mean, it is politics. It is religion. And and it's all part of it. It's all part of it. I mean, he he's predicting right now what they don't understand, which is everything that he's walking into now. He's, you know, he's walking across uh, down the Kidron, you know, down, down the Mount of Olives, down the Kidron Valley, 
up in and he's looking at these temple walls as he's walking in to, into the complex, the temple complex, and he's sitting there going, they're going to be gone. They're going to be grounded up and gone. And you're going to, you're going to be surrounded. Hey, it happened. <laughs> I mean, it happened. Took 30 years, you know, 30 plus years, but it happened. And they didn't know he knew, but they didn't, they didn't know what exactly what he was talking about. But it's like, you know, this, he's talking about a, a political government being used for his glory and for his purposes. And he's talking about it right here. It's, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's true. It's true. And uh, all because last line of verse 44, which we ended on, you did not recognize the time of your visitation as the New American Standard uh, didn't recognize the importance of this visit right here. <laughs> and, and and honestly, I mean, you, you look at it, you look at the prophetic readings of the old testament and there there what they didn't they didn't think of a first coming and a second coming they thought all of it as as one thing so i mean he says that and i'm like you know what i mean if you if you really put yourself in the mind of you know a a uh, first century jew how would how would you ever get it how would you even uh, comprehend that yeah, yeah. They weren't uh, thinking that that was in a frame of mind because what as the story played out, it was uh, though it's there in scripture, it's not lined out somewhere in one particular place. <laughs> There's little snippets here and there, and it, when you put it all together now, we see it. Uh, but well, uh, well, even let's put it this way. I mean, it's in a in a hundred. Well, it's going to be about sixty some odd years. We think we have it all lined out with with the New Testament, but we still argue about that in in theological circles today that we can't see what ex exactly is going to come. You know, mm -hmm. that's why we got we got ah millennials, millen you know, post millennials, pre millennials, and all that because even though it's there. Uh, some people, we still argue about it. So I, I, I have, I have a lot of uh, sympathy for those first century Jews trying to make sense in that time of what was going on. Um, it's crazy. Uh, I, I, I think that's a great point to make uh, because <laughs> we still don't get it real. <laughs> no, no. Listen, we pretend, uh, but we, 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 we don't necessarily understand so that brings us, jesus jesus is lord hey listen <laughs> if we get if we get everybody to understand that he is coming back all right mm -hmm. we're good you know what i mean to finish uh, the to finish the job to finish the job i mean you can you can talk about how he gets back you know in the and all that stuff but if we all agree that he is coming back then that's a very good place to start <laughs> so maranatha come lord there jesus you, come yeah. lord jesus so we got to the end of 20 lesson 20 which is great now we will pick up next week in session 21 and it's one of these crazy ones where we pick up a couple of verses at the end of 19 and then we go through chapter 20 um so we're going to go, we're, we're getting into the last week of Jesus and uh, from what Luke says, uh, because the last so, week of Jesus. Yeah. So, so we should talk about that for a minute. Uh, and I, 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 it's in my notes and I, I cleaned my notes up already, but there are those who believe that it, it wasn't just, that's, that's John's uh, telling of the story and that Luke uh Talk we'll, and we'll read that line next week, I think, uh, where it talks about him teaching in the temple every day. That there was uh, some time there, and even six months that he came in in the fall, and this happens in the spring at Passover. And uh, we'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that next time uh, yeah. with that line. That uh, for some people, there was this extended period of time of Jesus in Jerusalem yeah. that ends at the Passover there. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, Luke, the way Luke tells it, uh, he doesn't say uh, what time of year it is. 
uh, in fact. So we don't know exactly when he's coming in. And Luke only uses coats and doesn't say anything about branches, whereas everybody else mentions some branches. And the branches could be for Sukkot, uh, the, the Jewish uh, Feast of Booths, because everybody waved branches during yeah. that particular uh, festival, which would be in the fall, like October, yeah. and then leading into. Uh, so there are other timings, just like the whole thing about uh, what is it, <laughs> pre millennial, post millennial, the timing things <laughs> can be different. But the the idea is the same. It, it yeah it uh, yeah we we'll we'll get there when we get there because it it is dangerous and very difficult to try to put a chronology down uh, yeah. with with all of the gospels. Yeah, many and, and, and you'd think with four books written about Jesus's life right there, it it would be so simple. But they all give varying details that yep. uh, can be interpreted different ways and the yep. main idea is jesus is lord amen so so there we go so uh next week we we finish chapter 19 and we go into the the entire chapter 20 which will be wonderful um there you go so thank you chris yes uh and gee i wonder where i'll be next time uh <laughs> so <laughs> It's, it's one of those times of year. So if, if uh, it's uh, uh, Friday and it's uh, or Saturday or Thursday or, or whatever, <laughs> whatever day it is, we'll we'll find each other. That's right. And, and it'll always be played on Sunday. So <laughs> with that, would you like to end with prayer? And, you know, I think it, it should be all around the tree of the sycamore tree. Mm, I like it. Yeah, yeah. At, at that sycamore tree, Lord, you you looked up and saw Zacchaeus, uh, and you uh, asked him to come down and be a part of something that you were on the move for, and you're still on the move. You're still finding us in various places, uh, out on a limb, up a up a tree, uh, in the gutter. Uh, in in our homes, in our kitchens, uh, at work, uh, you find us in all kinds of places. And Lord, we pray that when you find us, we'll find you to be our Lord, to be the Savior, to be the one who makes the all the difference in this world and the world to come for us and for those around us. We ask you to use us. Send us out to prepare the the details so that you are known when you come and discover the lives you've, that have yet discovered you. We pray this and ask you to use us in that way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Until next time, we will see you and have a wonderful week. Take care.